Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to Digital Diversity Streams, here on the Monster Mash. Uh, today we've got something very special that I've been looking forward to for quite a while. We are going to play Validate. Hey Draz, how you doing? We are going to play a visual novel that has been very much um, something I've been looking forward to for quite a while. It's... Hey, Pepe, how you doing? It's gonna be big and gay, and we're gonna have a lot of fun with it. So we'll just... We'll chill for a moment. We'll chill. We'll get in a good space. We'll be in a good space. Where how's, how's audio? We've got the music, like, the background music for the game in the background. It's a little loopy, but it'll do for the moment. Um, how's me? Since I'm not sure how much... Uh, voice recording there is in this uh, so yeah I'm I am excited this is this is gonna be that's good thanks this, this is gonna be a fun one I think this is gonna be a lot of fun uh, it's uh, definitely uh, aroused some discussions with its cast uh, so music's louder than me okay let's drop the music a little bit there we go yeah this should be fine My, my mic tends to pick up a little less than I would think. I think that, yeah, that, that should be okay. I hope that's okay. Um, but yeah, so this is one hell of a diverse cast of characters in this game, and therefore it has elicited some level of discussion. Um, of the sort that usually requires us to block some people, but... <laughs> Such is such is the way of things. Such is the way of things when you're when you're trying to encourage a diverse space. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna chill for a bit. How's everyone doing? How are you all doing today? Uh, I hope you I hope you all are doing doing the good. We got some tea. We got some energy drink. We got some water. So I'm all hydrated. We got some some plushy friends back here in case we need some emotional support. Um. But yeah, I think we're pretty good. Tired? Yeah, tired? Tired is a thing. Tired is a definite thing. Laid up in bed till an hour ago? I mean, that's fair enough. Heck. Ah, <laughs> uh, the... That one. That one. Uh, this is the off-brand. So this isn't the real one. This is the off-brand one. You can tell because all of the all the paws are pointing in different directions. Like the paws are pointing in different directions. The face is like kinda squibbed. Um But I like them. You have the big one? You have the big real the real one or the, the off-brand one? But I like them they're squishy. They don't vibrate like the official one does, but I don't need a And then I've got uh Gimbap and Bimbap here, which are little kaiju kitties, like, uh, what is it, uh, kaiju kitties, I think is the brand for these ones, um, definitely when I, I move I need to get the, the proper one of these, and then little Goji here, um, is gonna, I don't know, end up in a better home, you got all the emotes, what, come on Goji, sit properly, the tail also doesn't sit properly, so. Um, I definitely need more kaiju plushies. Like, it's so hard to find decent kaiju plushies. I, next time I'm in Japan, I need, like... Yeah, I got the, the Lego Jurassic Park dinosaur skeletons. Because, you know, how, how they're described in those are, are definitely... Um, oh, I've got some more kaiju toys coming in the mail, and I'm really excited. I ended up getting uh, the... I got a couple of Neckers. I got uh, the Shin Godzilla Beam, and I got the 1956 poster version of Godzilla. The one with the very awkwardly redone American version of the movie, but the poster is amazing. Hey, Onyx! And I got uh, the pop vinyl T-Rex from Jurassic Park. You have a, a Baragon plush? I need a Baragon plush. That's my doggo. That's my boy. 
Um, but I also want to get like the Shin Godzilla plush. Next time I'm hi Max, how you doing? Next time I'm in Japan, I'm raiding the Godzilla's toy, the Godzilla store, and I'm getting every plush they have. I don't care. I'm gonna spend a thousand dollars on Godzilla plushies. Yeah, I would just want Baragon to win for once. Is that so much to ask? Anyway, anyway, what are we doing today? We are playing Validate. We are playing Validate. Uh, this is just the intro bit. I haven't actually clicked anything, so we'll get to that. Um, I checked with the creators. There's content warnings. There is a little bit of uh, transphobia in one of the storylines, and there's some class struggle stuff in another one. But they've advised there aren't really any content warnings I need to watch out for in the demo. Um, so I'll just keep an eye on and make sure that we've got, like, the right stuff going for that. Let me check. Because there's 12 playable characters in this, I believe. Something like that. I can't remember. I need, I need to check. Th there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot of routes to take. I don't know if they're 12 playable, 12 romanceable. I can't remember. Um, yeah, the UI design is really pretty, so, just doing a little check, make sure we got everything up and running, uh, this demo is currently available on itch.io, uh, the game is in, uh, Kickstarter backing right now, it has just funded, um, I'm not sure if it's 12 playable characters, I need to, let me, let me have a look, it's something like, uh, with 12 playable characters and 30 routes to choose from. Uh, yeah, that, that, there's a lot. There's a lot in this game. Um, and I'm not sure if that's just the demo. That might just be the demo. So I'm not sure. Apparently there's about tw two hours worth of gameplay in the demo, so we'll see how it go. Um, but yeah, the, the Kickstarter just funded. I'm really excited about it. Uh, it still has, like, 22 days to go on the Kickstarter. Um, and I've, I've really been appreciating the people who make this because there is not a lot of uh, people of colour focused games out there, as, even in the queer spaces. I found some. I haven't found a lot. And, like, I push... For this shit. I've been pushing for this shit since I started the program. It's like, the, the queer game space is, is overly white. And this is from someone who literally reflects light. I'm that white. Saying it. Um, so, it's... Oh god, who knows? They have a big team. They have a big team, I believe. Or at least a big team for a visual novel. Um, so, it's really good to find a game that focuses more on people of colour. There's a lot of different... Um, backgrounds in this so i'm really hey tangled how you doing so i'm really excited to give it a go and of course being a game that is focused entirely on people of color um it has of course elicited some negative reactions from certain white people i'm gonna say um even in the queer spaces we have this problem um to the point that the Validate team have been really amazing with it, and they've even memed the kind of responses that they get, to the point where, like, one of the stretch goals is putting a white person in the game. <sighs> I think I need to turn that light off. I'm a little too... I'm a little too white today. I think it's just the game, actually. Um, so yeah, I think they get, like... If they get, like, an extra $10,000 funding or something like that, they're gonna put a white person in the game, and I'm just like... I don't care. Just get get more funding. You deserve it. Anyway, I think we're probably good. I think we're probably good. Um, we've been sitting on this for a while now, so I think it's about time to start. Yeah, they've got like I think that's like a twenty person team. Um, so let's um let's make this thing happen, huh? Let's make this thing happen. Actually, did they? How do they do it? I think they might have actually funded enough for that as well. I think they funded their thirty-six thousand dollar goal, at thirty-two thousand dollar goal, and they're aiming for their next eight, their eighty thousand dollar goal, which will be including a fishing mini game. Yes, they're those kind of memers, and we love them. All right, so without further ado, 
let us check out. Well, if you want the fishing minigame, you don't need to black back the game. Um, let us check out Validate. Hopefully my audio is fine, because I will, of course, be having to read some of this. Let's have a little, what do we think? I think some energy drink to start us off with. The sun shines out over a cold, jersey city day. The wind isn't blowing as hard as it usually does, but you find yourself hugging in your coat a bit closer to your body to shield yourself from the cold. Hurrying yourself along, you duck into the hair salon your friend pointed you towards, and the warmth of a space heater fills your body the moment you step in. The room is dark, all lights pointed towards the area and far back that looks like a makeshift stage. It's full of faces you've never seen before. They look so warm, yet so distraught. Did you just walk into a cult? You decide to sit yourself in the corner, pulling out your phone to text one of your friends, hoping one can help you in your time of need. Who will you text? All right, can we... There's a little bit of lag. I'm just wondering if that's just the game. Let's take the text speed up. I'm just going to refresh it because it's lagging a little bit. Just a sec. What? And I'm going to redo that. I don't want it lagging too much if it's going to be lagging over the text. All right. There we go. That's what we want. Alright, uh, go to the about. There is your settings menu is very close to default. But they change it real slick and nice. Yeah, so there's, there's their team. It's actually quite a big team. Uh, you can see here that the writers did specific routes, which is something you see uh, pretty reasonable. Um, different sprite artists. I can't see anyone I recognize, but yeah, like, god, this this is a big team, like, visual novel spaces, you don't often get big teams, so this is kind of big. Alright, let's return, and let's start. Yeah. Alright, demo build, we've got four to choose from, so, I don't know if this is... Oh, this is the friend we're texting, I think. So, I'm going to turn the music down on my end. So, let's see. We have Isabel Morrigan, who is 26, 27. I don't know that symbol. Yeah. Uh, liked Spamilton before it was cool. No longer like Spamilton. Uh, bitches be singing all the time and wonder why people call them birds. Look at these character designers. I love the designs. I love them. We have Anoki. Uh, 22. Bunch of different pronouns. I love this design. This is really cool. And you've got their um, nationalities up in the top right, which I think is really cool. Leo? Okay. So we got two Leos there. Uh, Anoki. Um, oh fuck, oh god fuck white people, yep, pretty much, uh, cosplay, that, that's kind of the meme, this, this particular character, um, reference, uh, got them a lot of, um, negativity from a lot of very, uh, butthurt white people, and I, like, I'm, I'm giving them points of following through. Um, we've got Arihi. I have no idea how to pronounce that. Um, their belief, their thoughts are marriage is a scam created by the government to make people rely on others. Claims romance is dead. Yearns anyway. Uh, and then we have Ashley, uh, who says calling people slurs on the internet isn't very gamer of you. Uh, <laughs> saying poggers to numb the pain. Oh fuck, who do we choose here? So we have the, th the theatre teacher, so I believe this is the friend we're calling. So 
so we have the theater teacher, the urban planner slash co professional cosplayer, the marriage counselor. Hey, welcome. And the professional gamer. Fuck. I'm gonna need some help with this one. Who are we gonna who are we gonna pick? I mean Ashley's a Scorpio, so Anoki or if I Ashley or E. Well that's that's two for or E. Ah uh, The cosplayer? Okay, god damn it, that's two for like each of them. Yeah, exactly. You can't just make people choose so I mean we've got a Scorpio, so I'm definitely gonna be going for Ashley later on. Okay, so we've got two for Ashley, two for Arahi, two for Anoki. You're gonna stand a gamer girl? Okay, so that's three for Ashley. I think we have to go for Ashley here. Unless we can get some some more balance out here. God. I can't deal with all this con all this like <laughs> I mean I might have to go with the Scorpio here just because you know Scorpio I just love the calling people slurs on the internet isn't very gamer of you like that's fantastic Let let's go with that one just because that felt poggers <laughs> hey how you doing <laughs> god damn it that's another one for God, who's that? Yeah, I think that's four for Ashley. Okay, we're gonna go with Ashley. This UI is amazing, by the way. For being the most popular witch streamer in Jersey City, you don't exactly have the IRL popularity to match. Okay, this is us. Ah, uh, fuck. You're well aware that you're running low on relationships and friendships lately, but that doesn't mean you can't try to shake things up for yourself, right? Which I would stream on which. Just say it. You should have just enough time before your next stream to meet up with someone, but now that you've got your phone out and you're sorting through your options, you're starting to realize that this might have been harder than you expected. Sure, you've got plenty of names in this, but well, she was your f a friend of your ex, and he was a friend of your ex, and... Oh, they might fit what you're looking for after all. With a huff and just the barest amount of hesitation, you open up their contact and press send. Oh. God. Fuck. Yeah, this is a meta choice. Fuck. Um... Ashley, being a gamer is so tiring, normies don't even know. Why is this UI so good? So our date selects are Isabel, Singings for the Birds, who is tired of Spamilton, which I think is fantastic. Or Yolanda, who's a hairstylist. Fuck. Um... Uh, please give me a, an I for Isabel or a Y for Yolanda. I'm gonna need some help with this. I'm really bad at making decisions for myself. That's why I outsource. <laughs> uh, sorry, uh, Yolanda's stats. Uh, actually, let's move me for the moment. Uh, let's move me. Oh, we can go nah, so we initially said no. There, there's Yolanda's. And there's Isabel's. So, a Leo and, uh, is that, is that Pisces? I have no idea, or is it Gemini? I, I don't know my zodiac signs. We have two for Yolanda, three for Yolanda. That's the Pisces. Yay, I got one. <laughs> Alright. I wonder what the knot does. God damn. I'm like, I'm so impressed by this already and we haven't even started the game. Fuck. Alright, let's go with Yolanda. 
Oh my god. Send. <laughs> Fuck. I'm already feeling awkward. Like, it's been so long since I did, like, dating that this feels like a thing. God, how long has it been, Onyx? It's been a while now. Alright, you gotta date the UI? Heck yeah. On knowing better now. Oh, and this is like gives you all the the people who did specific routes as well. That's so cool. And this, like the the background UIs, I love this because this is a the background UI in itself. I have a feeling is the the just the way of like chucking the image into Photoshop and chucking through a bunch of filters, but I love the simplicity of that. Ah, uh, the sun is setting and you are desperate for some kind of change. Your exhaustion is hidden behind layers of makeup. <laughs> You're in a once familiar part of town, now filled with bike shops, hipster tea places and other seeds of gentrification. Oh God, it's too real, I can't deal with it. <laughs> You feel like a hypocrite. You moved here from college and for college and never left. You're not sure how you want to leave just yet. You've been here for years now. This is home. Yeah, these ones look good. Anyway, that's enough. Your name is Ashley Colum. I do not know the straight pronunciation, so I'm just gonna go with Colum because phonetics and you barge into the nearest hair salon because you're desperate for a change. Uh, side shave, please. Something to prove you're a new woman, someone who won't let boys or friends hurt her again. It's been around a week since you once, uh, since you once again got dumped by a boy and all your friends and you know there's something wrong with you. Why not start with a surface level change before getting deeper? You enter the salon without thinking. All the stylists and patrons are black and you know you've made a mistake. So you, you so don't belong here. Before you can make a swift exit, someone calls out to you. How can I help you? <laughs> you look and immediately recognize her. From the way her shoulders stiffen and her eyes widen, she recognizes you too. Oh fuck, that moment when you message someone on a dating profile and then you meet, see them the next day, like, unexpectedly. Yolanda Cerise, I'm gonna go with Cerise, is standing in front of you and you have no idea how you're supposed to act. It's, uh, been a while. Sorry to invade your space like this. You genuinely feel bad. Yolanda was part of another friend group that also blew up in your face a few years back. Yeah, so you date different characters. You you play as various characters, so in the full game there's going to be 12 playable characters, I believe, and 30 possible routes within those 12 characters. So the way I would assume it's going to work is that you would pick uh, one of those 12, and then each of those 12 is going to have two options, at least two options, and then... I'm guessing you'd have... I don't know. There's 30 different routes, so that'd only take you up to 24. So I'm guessing there's either some hidden routes on top of that, or... Um, yeah, or you'd end up with more possible dating options. But yeah, so... Yeah, shipping sim instead of just traditional dating sim. Yeah, exactly. Like it, this is this is already far from a traditional dating sim, and I'm loving it. The two of you weren't close, but even so, you're uncomfortable seeing her in person again. Though you'd only met her in person one time, that's enough to seal the deal. It's no problem. What brings you to this part of town? I really need someone with a Jersey accent to come here and do the voices for me, because I have not like. I feel like Anna to come, Anna Valens to come in and do the voices for me or something. 
At least someone seems calm and totally not flustered over this. Not cool, Ashley. I love the simplicity of this UI as well. Like, it's very clean. And it's very... It's very easy to read. Um, I was just wondering if I could get a haircut, but I realized I'm attached. Well, that was somewhat honest. Go you. God, you want to groan just thinking that. You've got to bring your A game here, no matter how awkward it feels. I get that. It takes time to want change. That's a loaded statement. Anyways, how have you been? It's been two years, hasn't it? Two years, 11 months, and six days. You go through a lot of friends, and you've got a habit of keeping track. You do this so often, you've got the pattern down. You get with an ex, you spend a few months together, his friends become your friends, and everything goes sideways after that. Yeah, it, it's been a minute. I've been good, though. Opened up this place last year, and I've been here ever since. Yeah, rip Ashley. Oh yeah, you mentioned wanting to open up your own salon. I'm happy for you. Can we do the middle button thing? Yeah, we can do the middle button thing. I love these character designs as well. Like, the amount of effort that's go not gone into these character sprites is fantastic. She talked about it all the time on chat, gushing about how much progress she made towards getting the proper loans. You were jealous of her, but you did your best to hide it. You might be a somewhat shitty person, but you tried to suppress your ugly side. Not that it helped much in the end. Thanks. How's your streaming going? Really well, actually. I ended up quitting my grocery job and going pro. Holy fuck, actually doing well. Like, for someone to be able to go, like, full-time streaming and give up their day job, they're doing well. So let's uh, give a clap to Ashley for that. It was an easy decision. For some reason, you expect it to be harder to give up normal hours, somewhat guaranteed pay, but people seem to like your personality. More importantly, they liked your face. Really? Congrats! She sounded genuine, and that surprises you. Isn't she resentful after everything that happened with Isaiah? Isaiah. Yeah, that'd be Isaiah. Yeah, exactly. Second person with narration's an interesting choice. She should be. They were pretty close last time you checked. Should you even ask about it? Why are you happy for me? Yolanda, can I ask you something? Sure, go ahead. Why are you happy for me? You want to know from her directly. You wouldn't be surprised if she lied to you. If she's still in contact with Isaiah. If she wanted you to get the fuck out so she could trash talk you for walking into her salon like nothing happened. No, all good. I think we just lost a goji in the background. Probably off stomping something. Lurking is participation. And the story I'm enjoying. I think we should talk about this in private. Destiny, can you hold the fort? Sure thing. The woman you presume is Destiny returns to washing someone's hair and Yolanda leads you into a back office. She gestures for you to sit and you shake your head. She sits instead and visibly relaxes. It must be her first break all day. Now, let's talk. Why wouldn't I be happy for you? You know why. Your voice comes out harsher than you intended. You're not sure how to handle this situation or why you're not leaving. But you need to know. I cut off Isaiah. What? I don't think you were good to him, no. But I could tell from behind the scenes that he was much worse to you. I take that shit seriously. Okay, Yolanda is good, peoples. We like Yolanda. Like, heck. You deflate, your shoulders slump, and you crouch to the ground with a groan. When did you cut him off? About a month after y'all broke up, I realized shit was wrong too late, and it's one of my biggest regrets. Yeah, that music had me scared too. It's like when it just cuts out. I've been playing, I've played way too many visual novels, and when the music cuts out like that, usually it means something shit, something scary is going on. 
doesn't have to be. You're still awfully charming. I can't really blame anyone preferring him over me. God, why do I have the feeling Isaiah might have been an abuser? Because you, you get this kind of story a lot. Far too often. So, I'm curious. I mean, I last checked his social media nine months ago and he s seems to still be with all our old friends. Don't do that to yourself. It ain't worth a thing. I love these sprites. They're great. You know that, but it's hard not to. Back when, when you were with Zen, you constantly checked in on Isaiah to prove to yourself that you were doing better. All you did was all it did was put you in a shitty mood for the rest of the day, because he always seemed to be thriving when you were just surviving. Yeah. Yeah, th this game is not afraid to is not going to be pulling its punches. So like, there's going to be emotions happening. There's going to be like language and stuff, and there's going to be talk of all kinds of stuff. So this game does not pull punches. So, like, there's there's a lot of reading between the lines I'm doing, so that'd be, so me making my assumptions is based out of my experiences and my, how I perceive the world. So if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Um, yeah, more people need to be like Yolanda. Easier said than done, but seriously, I'm done worrying about him. I have another ex to think about now. You stand back up and Yolanda gives you a sympathetic smile. Are you okay? You shrug. You could be better, but you're starting to get somewhere. You've made one friend so far. It's still a new friendship, but shouldn't that count for something? I'll survive. Zen wasn't worth a year I spent on him anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Un unfortunately, Ashley seems a bit like a serial monogamist. Um, who will just keep ending up in relationships that prove to be, like, negative, as opposed to, like, just focusing on herself. Um, and I do not, I do not blame her for that. Um, but it's, like, what I'm, con what I'm seeing, if this is, like, the pattern she goes through, you know, ends up with a guy, stuff goes bad, she loses the guy and the friend network then moves to the then goes to the next one the next one so now that's the spirit zen could be sweet but when he wasn't busy being an when he wasn't busy being an idiot eventually though that stopped being charming and started becoming really annoying you can admit that much thanks i can't believe i'm saying this but it's nice to see you again i get it not gonna lie, I was a little apprehensive when I saw it was you. I figured you'd, <laughs> I figured you'd still think I fuck with Isaiah. I did, so I'm glad you cleared that up. It's good to know there are still some decent people in the world. Mood. Considering how many people have cut you off in their lifetime, you're actually relieved. Decent people still exist and want something to do with you. Who would have thought? Yeah, hopeful of people and they really mess up. Yeah, like, and, and unfortunately we, that's something we do. It's, it's a pattern that we, we do. Um, we build up hope that the next people we're going to be with aren't going to be as bad as the ones before. Uh, and a lot of the time that requires you to go with your gut. Because sometimes, you know, there's, there's the hope that comes from the cognitive side and there's your gut reaction of, is this person just going to be as bad as the last one? Um... And sometimes there's a balancing act there. I try to be, I really do. I don't need the validation so much anymore, but it's still nice to hear. It makes sense. We all need our ego stroked sometimes. I can't picture the old Ashley saying that. Really? Really? With Isaiah, you were so much more. Hmm. Subdued? She's not wrong, you were definitely less outspoken back when you were with Isaiah. You were fairly confident until you dated him, and now it's like you never did. Fun and cute days, yeah. Like some, you, you need games with feels. I had a feeling, it's all good. You're not dragging the mood at all. Like, that's, that's the point. These games, like, these games especially, the ones that I play on this, on this schedule, are uh, usually very heavy feels 
and very quite large big discussion points. Um, so like, it's good to good to have it. Yeah, re uh, lots of relatable feels. We get a lot of relatable feels on digital diversity. For all Zen's flaws, he helped you there. You'd almost be grateful if you weren't such a stupid prick. I'll take that as a compliment. I like Ashley's broad shoulders. You don't often see um, women characters with broad shoulders in games, and I liked that more, please. Uh, honestly, you want to snap at her for that. What does she know about suffering like... What is it? There you go. About always being the lesser than someone, about being reminded of that inferiority constantly. Yeah, exactly, same. I'm glad it's not. I mean, it's possible that Isabel's one would have been lighter, so it's hard to tell. You told that to Zen too, that he would never know, never understand. And if he didn't, so he left you. You know, telling that people talk in your abuse was fine. Was like, oh, yeah, wow, yeah, that's relevant as heck. He knew he would never understand your pain. It was one. Honestly, I feel like you've mellowed out. Yolanda definitely seems calmer, more secure. It's a soothing presence to be in, and especially since you've been feeling so lost. Thank you. I'm trying to settle down. Being a business owner is no joke, but then being a professional gamer doesn't sound easy either. It isn't, but it's worth it. Wouldn't you say the same for your salon? Definitely. Say, are you interested in poetry? <laughs> Fucking breaks out the poetry book. You remember one of your exes used to write shitty poems, and you guess that about summarizes your experience and fondness, or lack thereof, with regards to poetry. Usually you're too busy working, or gaming for fun, which is usually an extension of working, or doing everything else it takes to keep yourself afloat. You suppose her poetry was probably better than his. I mean, it's nice, I guess. I remember you saying you wrote some. You barely do, what stood out wasn't anything specific or revealing about her poems, but she mentioned only sharing it with significant others, and that, to you, was worth remembering. She was the opposite of that ex of yours, at least as a writer. Poet? You have a good memory, I swear, I only mentioned it once. Thanks, but why do you ask? You see, I'm hosting a poetry event in two days for youth around the neighbourhood to share their truth. I was wondering if you wanted to come, or maybe we could grab dinner and catch up while it's happening. My colorist should be there to supervise. That would be really nice, actually. You'd appreciate that a lot. You're not gonna lie, your thoughts on Yolanda were few and far between, but you can tell she's changed. You like to think you've changed too. Yeah. I'd be down for that. I'll probably be streaming during the event itself, but I'd like to get dinner afterwards. Sounds good to me. Do you still have my number? I don't. Could you plug yourself into my phone again? You open your contacts app and let Yolanda plug herself in. I save myself as a contact. When are you usually done streaming? It depends. I try and finish around 8. I'll text you when you're done streaming. Oh, what? This is Jersey City, so it's at like Eastern Standard Time, something like that. I can't remember. That works for me. There's no way of keeping your skills without constant practice. You spent the better part of a week moping, and you haven't even recorded yet. It's a good thing Yolanda offered to text first. You know yourself and will forget it once you get in the zone. Bye, Ashley. I hope to see you around. Yeah, me too. You find your way back home, your body, your tired body quivering with anticipation. Sadly, you have shit to do. Oh. I need one of these, like, halo light things. Come on down to the gamer zone. Gamer zone. TM. Uh, what we've got there is uh, an ATK racing chair. Um, we've got a halo light. Um... We've got some older Logitech speakers going on. Um, 
So I love this is obviously just someone's actual rig and they've taken a photo and they chuck it through a filter. Uh, the bi lighting is on purpose. I would hope so. It's very bisexual lighting. You boot up your rig and pop a frozen pizza in the oven while everything loads. It's not that you can't cook, but you never like cooking that much. At least not as much as you love baking. Possible? I mean, that could be a drawing tablet? That's a switch. That one up there's a switch. That's- look- yeah, that looks like a drawing tablet. That looks like a switch. So we've got someone who does art streams and game streams, probably. Um, this is a nice setup. You got the, the boom mic hanging off the side here. This is what I need to set up in my new place. I like this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This looks like a good setup. Baking was your thing, and cooking was Zen's. It was something he was surprisingly good at, and he liked to do. Not that you miss his cooking, or him. You miss what he could give you. Wow, you're more of a bitch than you thought. You wonder if you've gotten worse over the years. Fuck. Mood. You won't be surprised if you have. While you're in the middle of contemplating your own character development, you get a push notification. I love the way that's put. It's like, <laughs> contemplating your own character development is a great one. You wonder if it's Zen, perhaps groveling for you to come back, or one of your ex-friends telling you you were way too harsh. That you should have just rolled over and taken it. Well, you're done. After Isaiah, you promised yourself that you wouldn't take anything from anyone anymore. Think people is hard. Yeah, exactly. Whatever. Your phone won't check itself. <gasps> we've got a we've got a phone app UI. I love these. Hi Ashley, it's Yolanda. Hi, what's up? Just headed home from work. I was wondering if you were still on for two days from today. God, the days run together when you're not streaming. You check your calendar and you see that you're free as long as you manage to squeeze some practice in the morning and early afternoon. Telling Yolanda that much, though, gives you pause. You sigh, no matter how tempting, you refuse to flake. On the first date, at least. Yeah, you're allowed to flake on the third, but not on the first. Hard rule. Yeah, I'm good with that. Do you know any places nearby? I do. Do you like Thai food? Yeah, I do. Good. What do you think about this place? Yolanda sends you the address of the local Thai restaurant. You don't recognize the name or location, but the food looks tasty. If it isn't, you might have to cut her off too. <laughs> Food's no good. Relationship over. Yeah, I'm down to go over there. How about we go there about 6? 6. 6.30 works better for me? Okay, sounds good. See you Friday at 6.30. See ya. You toss away your phone after that and focus on gaming. But you know you're smiling and that means you're better than you were before. It's a start. And you hope that it's a start to something good. Mm -hmm. That's a really lovely way to think of it. It's like, if you're smiling, it means you're better than you were before. Like, if you're smiling and someone hasn't told you to smile. Like, that's that's a beautiful way of putting things. Being stuck inside, you're about to lose if you miss cooking through for something. <laughs> Mood. You arrive just in time to the restaurant, though you worried you wouldn't be with how many ride shares cancelled on you. Yolanda is already there, settled comfortably in the waiting area. She perks up when she sees you, greeting you with a wave and a friendly smile. You try your best to smile back. I love the bandana. It's so goddamn cute. Yeah, it's a good restaurant design there. Hi, Ashley. Hey, how are you? Good, good. Long day today, but it was worth it to see some poets come by. I see. Do you get a lot of recurring visitors? From your brief visit to the salon, you understand why Yolanda would have lots of people coming and going. It's a welcoming space, one that you would have liked to go into under slightly different circumstances. 
<laughs> ace color scheme. Yeah, let's get more restaurants with an ace color scheme. Yeah, I do. I haven't been at it long, but I have my fair share of repeats. It's always good to know I can provide a safe space for them to express themselves. You love the yellow lipstick and a bandana? Yeah. It's such a good aesthetic. I love that everyone has their aesthetic. Like, Ashley's is... Ashley's is, like, the pink and the lavender. And Yolanda's is the, the yellow and... I'm gonna go the yellow and white. Probably, I mean, there's the blue there, but... Like, I think the yellow and white stands out quite a lot. I'm sure that means a lot to them. You sit down next to her in the waiting area. The hostess comes up to greet you. We have a table for two over here. God, all that effort just to do a hostess character. <laughs> it's because in Renpai you have to like add each individual character. The scripting for this must be incredible, by the way, for something this big like of just the demo, the script for this game must be huge. Sans. They direct you to the center of the restaurant and the men place menus and utensils down as the two of you take your seats across from each other. The hostess returns to the entrance and you are left alone with Yolanda, at least as alone as you can be in a crowded restaurant. All right, where were we? Safe spaces. Safe spaces. They sure sound nice. You sound bitter and you don't try and cut that bitterness with a smile. You have every right to be too, because you've never felt safe anywhere but home. Yolanda seems to pick up on this. Are you okay? No, I'm not. The words come out harsher than you expect them to, but you're not wrong about this. You should be upset that she found something you couldn't, and that she was lucky enough. Well, if you want to talk about it, I'm here. But if you're going to whine about it, I'm not about that. You're desperate to blow up, cause a scene, burn another bridge. She couldn't be talking to you like that. You don't tolerate people talking to you like that. You always fall into the same trap of assuming your friends are your safe space, that a safe space can even can ever be a person. Thankfully, you know better now. But you swallow your pride, save it for later. You're doing something to make a good impression right now. Anyway, about safe spaces, they're important. Yeah, yeah. This, this game, this game feels. They're important. I think it's okay for them to be people as well, if that makes sense. It doesn't, but you hold your tongue. You don't want to show your vulnerability so easily, even though she's known you at your worst. That actually makes this whole process harder. I see. Do you think of the salon as a safe space? Depends on who's there. She says this with such deadpan look that you're sure she's serious. She cracks into a smile, then you're not sure how to react. Of course I do. It's not perfect 24-7, but because I feel safe in it, I'm able to roll with the punches better. You guess you could say the same thing about your apartment, if you're being honest with yourself. You've grown to really love the place and you're glad you didn't have to agree to move in with Zen a few months back. That would have made the whole situation a lot uglier than it needed to be. I guess I think of my apartment as a safe space for me. I've never really thought about it too hard. It's sort of a lie. You've thought about be home being a safe saying yeah, home being safe for you for a long time, but you've never used the term safe space for yourself. Defining it so simply never occurred to you. But you just knew you were better off at home than you were anywhere else. That makes sense to me. I feel the way about my apartment as well. It's surrounded by things I love and it's a space for people I love to visit. What else could I ask for? Fuck. It's good definition of a safe space. Not much else. I like having people over too. Or at least you used to. You'd always send friends off with baked goods and borrowed copies of games. Now you spend most of your time indoors unless you absolutely have to go out and no one comes over except for your landlady. That woman always takes too much of whatever you bake. 
but I guess I only bring over close friends. You've never been to my place, right? Yeah, our place is gonna be like that. That's a stupid question. You know she's never been to your place. The two of you were never close enough for that. Besides, you lived with Isaiah back then and you haven't seen her since you moved out and found your own apartment. Never. And I know you haven't been to mine. Maybe that'll be a possibility someday. Yeah, maybe. I think that'd be nice. Oh. If this goes well, you're still not sure if it's going to. You still have your fair share of doubts about Yolanda, and you have to confirm some things before you decide she can have a place in your life again, no matter how small that might be. Yeah, close enough to see your worst, but not close enough to go over spooky. Besides, she already pissed you off a few times. You should tread carefully. Would it be cool if I asked you a weird question? You can tell she's tense. She probably knows what you're going to ask. You hate how nervous you seem, and you're dancing around the topic of Isaiah. You heard her say she cut him off, but what about everyone else that took his side? Are you still following them on Twitter? I think I know what you're going to ask me. And yes, I did get this bandana from an Etsy store. So this will be easy then. Are you still friends with Isaiah's friends? Not at all. I stuck around with Lucia for a hot minute, but we lost touch a long time ago. And it wasn't the only friend group I was part of though, and I bounced back pretty quick. You bounced back quickly as well, though it didn't turn out nearly as well for you. Maybe it was all the old scars held from them making true connections. Or maybe you just weren't meant for them in the first place. Yeah, it's, it's pretty heckin' relatable. Like, th these are... These are people that have been hurt. These are people that have gone through a lot. Um... Ashley especially seems to have spent a lot of her life getting hurt by people and finds it really hard to trust anything. And, and that's the thing, you know, we make this space for ourselves that we live in. And we try and make that as safe as possible so that if something does happen in the wider world that ends up making us feel better, at least we've got that space. You suppose the only way to find out is to keep trying, but that seems exhausting at this point. I see. Thanks for answering so honestly. Now that's out of the way, what else have you been up to? Are you still seeing Brad? You've only met Brad once, but you didn't like him much. He was kind of a dick. Not to mention he had an ego the size of the sun. Yolanda chuckles a little bit at that. It has a bitter edge to it, and you wonder if you've stepped on a landmine. You won't apologize for it, but you feel tad guilty. I dumped his ass ages ago. Then it was Ray, and now I'm single. Good. He was kind of a tool. You wonder if she went through something similar to you. You suddenly feel a little ashamed of your earlier thoughts, but who can blame you? Most people don't understand what you've been through. You're used to that. You're the only one who can defend yourself, and you will speak out if you feel you've been wronged. Like, this is relatable as heck. No one, no one knows what you have gone through. Folks, remember that. Like, we all go through a lot of shit. But no one knows what you have gone through. No one will really understand that the way you do. And you're allowed to feel bad. And you're allowed to feel... Uh, you're allowed to feel bitter. You're allowed to feel a bit defensive. Uh, as long as you don't take that out on people. It's generally the, the way I see it. Like, you're allowed to be very wary. Especially if you've been, if you've been hurt. Just... Except that it will take you time to get through things, and you're allowed to have your own gut feelings about how things are going to turn out. And if you've been wronged, call them out. Seriously. Seriously. You're interrupted by a server heading your way. Are you ready to order some appetizers? Do we want appetizers? I'm good. Have you looked at the menu? 
You haven't actually, so you take a quick glance and pick something you think you might like. I'll take the garlic pork. Are you kidding? I was gonna get that. She's smiling though, clearly pleased you two have similar tastes. Uh, I would like some too, please. So two orders of the garlic pork? Yep. Thank you. The server leaves after that and you turn to face your launderer again. Now where were we? Brad being a tool. Right, I wasn't sure what was going on with me, but he wasn't good for my mental health. That's key, you know? That makes sense. Though I've never really thought about it like that. You've always gotten boyfriends because you thought they'd be good to you, not necessarily good for you. It's never fully occurred to you that there was a difference. Well, how have you thought about it? Shit, how do you respond to that one? You've always thought about relationships as transactional, but necessary. You haven't really been without one for so long, for long, and you wonder sometimes if you're dependent on them. Serial monogamy. Fucking called it. You've been in that cycle since you were 14. This sudden realization with an old friend turned new doesn't make you happy. Yolanda can probably tell you're thinking too hard about this because she looks incredibly concerned. Just, yeah, just digging through the real shit here. You can't manage to say anything. Your mouth goes dry and you look around. It's not like you can ever get this nervous. You don't know what's wrong with you. But this isn't it. You need to get over yourself. You okay, Ashley? You're not. But you don't know how to say that you aren't okay. You never know how to say you're not okay. And that's why you lash out or pretend it isn't happening. <sighs> and you get a better light. New place, better light. That's why you blow up, why you have to explode. There's no other way to go about it. You've learned that by now. The light in this room is terrible. I'm just gonna take what I can. So that leaves you here, confused, tongue-tied, and definitely not okay. Your London knows you're thinking too hard about this. Yeah. Yeah, they, they recognize a lot in each other, I think. I don't know. Honestly, that... When someone asks you if you're okay, I don't know is a totally valid answer. Like, recognize that. Recognize you're allowed to say, I don't know how I feel or I don't know how I'm dealing with things. I don't know what to say. It's okay. It's like that sometimes. I mean, relationships have always been a given. I'm pretty, so it's never been hard for me to get a man. The thing is, keeping one's a whole different issue. I know how relationships are supposed to be, it just never works out for me like that way for me. Well, Ashley, have you considered not men? Yeah. It's, it's a question, does, does, does Ashley consider herself hetero, does she consider herself allo, like... I feel the same way. Really? Not in every way, but relationships feel like the one thing that goes wrong in my life. Every time I think someone can be good for me, they end up disappointing me. Right? It's exhausting. Men are the worst at that. Sometimes I wish I was attracted to women. I hear they're better at this stuff. Honestly, it depends on the women, but a good chunk of us are more than in tune with things emotionally. Though, dating women isn't all good. I see. What are you thinking? You're straight. Everything about women might seem better to you, but you're straight. Are you, Ashley? Are you sure? Are you sure? Yeah, this has got a lot going on. Yeah, interested in everyone but cis men. Yeah. Are you really? So actually dead he's opposite using his shit up routes, yeah. Are you thinking about it? Thinking about what? Being with women. <laughs> that fucking grin. 
god, the... Have you noticed that the eyes on the bandana match up with Yolanda's eyes when she's happy? all grey out and so my light is terrible in here today. You have a few times out of curiosity, but it never went anywhere. Yeah, peak character designs. They were all too nice for you and you ended up being more drawn to some man in the first place. I mean, I've always seen myself as straight. I did too, till I realised I wasn't. How do you know? I started crushing on a girl in high school and everything clicked for me. I don't think you've ever developed on crushing women before, so that's off the table for you. You thought about you thought women were hot, but that's always been platonic. Yolanda is you. <laughs> I don't know about crushes. I, I guess I have a lot to think about. Seems like it. And one more thing. What is it? Don't ask me to be your experiment or, any, or anything. I love myself too much for that. <laughs> Yolanda's serious. I love it. I wasn't planning on it. You might not be the best person, but you're not that brand of asshole. You remember one of your former friends from high school getting played around by a straight girl and how angry you were on her behalf. You wouldn't do that to someone else. Would you? Good. Besides, I don't really do hookups. They never went end well for me. Me neither, for the most part. I mean, they're fine. I just always feel weird after them. Besides, I'm terrified I'll accidentally cook hook up with a fan. <laughs> Like you're an empty vessel for someone else's desires, you're aware people think you're hot, and you agree with them. You just wish you could have fun without your partner putting all this awkward, demeaning expectations on you. But that never happens, so for the most part you've sworn off hookups. At least with boyfriends you know they see you as a person. Would that be really so bad? I mean, they already love you. It'd be awful. You look around just in case any of your fans are actually here. No one's approached the two of you yet. Everyone seems occupied with their food. You think you're safe. Don't you like your fans? God, no. I'm indifferent towards the teenagers. I was one once, so I guess they deserve a chance. But I get a lot of weird, horny dudes no matter what I do. <laughs> Have you thought of Polly, Ashley? I mean, I get it. It's kind of like customer service, right? You can't control who you get, so you gotta make the best of it. <laughs> You're right about that. If I didn't love my job, I would seriously start blocking half my fan base. <laughs> oh, eternal struggles of a streamer. Of anyone, like, overly social, I guess. Like,. Oh, fuck. I mean, that, it's unfortunately a, a sad truth of being, uh, socially available, I guess would be a term of that, is being it, present for people and being there. And like, I, I like my nice little, my like, nice little world here, my wonderful community, it's all absolutely wonderful. And you know what? I have never felt any like any compulsion to block any of y'all so that says a good thing but i know so many people who like would have to like smile and just let it through and take the money just to like keep things going because yeah, fuck some people can be rough the moment you say it you realize you've made a mistake half is too generous You'd block at least three quarters of your fan base. Yolanda, however, seems amused at your statement. Which is a good thing, you suppose, if it means you can still be funny. Yeah, exactly, like... It's... it's rough and it's weird and... like... 
Like you see what social media is like. Think about that, except you're sitting in your chair talking to them for five, seven hours a day. Like you're there, they're seeing your face and you're directly communicating with them for seven hours a day or something like that, or even more sometimes. And you have to let it through. Like you have to keep it going. I feel on that one. If I didn't have a respectable business to run, I'd be hauling some of the bitches out by the hair. Yeah, exactly. You end up having to develop unhealthy parasocial relationships, and it's like... Hmm. That's why I keep things small. That's why I, like... Hell, I get more people coming in to say hi now and hanging out when I do a couple of hours a day a few times a week than I did when I was doing like eight hours a day. And you know what? I can't imagine having to deal with a huge crowd of people I probably wouldn't want to have to deal with. I deal with enough customer service shit in my life. I don't think I could deal with it. Running a hair salon is that bad? You usually don't pay attention to much when you're getting your hair done, so you don't know the environment that surrounds most salons. You know, so you think you have better things to pay attention to. Most people are nice, but folks are mad entitled, or gossips. My assistant's real good with that, but I can't deal with the shit talking. It gets to be too much sometimes, and it's always over some petty shit too. Like what? Like talking about the, their man cheating on them, or some backstabbing bitch coming to my, my, eh, that my client's gonna backstab right back. Or something about communal dick. I had an ex whose dick was communal. I only found out two two weeks in. He said he assumed all relationships with him were open. <sighs> Fuck. That was a riot, but you'd never take your 20 year old self seriously for deciding to date that man. But you got your revenge by getting into his apartment and wrecking his $400 guitar. <laughs> Help. That was fun. Plus you got to scream at him when he found out. Serves you right. For real? You'll end the laughs. You start to laugh as well. You see the server coming over with your meals and you turn to greet them. Here's your garlic pork. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Food looks good and you probably took look a little too eager. But you're hungry and oddly comfortable out about eh, around Yolanda to boot. So you dig in and watch her eat too. You're a bit of a messy eater when you're comfortable, but Yolanda doesn't look repulsed. Good, right? Hmm, thanks for taking me here. I'm glad you like it. She sounds warm when she says it. You're not sure what scares you more, the possibility she isn't being genuine, or the possibility she is. God, you're really bad at this whole making friends who have interests outside of gaming thing. Wait, people have interests outside of gaming? At least with other gamers, TM, you have something in common you can talk about. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, how's poetry? Real smooth, Ashley. It's good. I'm just writing my own self-indulgent things. What do you tend to write about? Mostly about life. Oh god, this game is ruining my voice. Oh. Can you tell it's been too long since I've done like consistent um, voice uh, visual novels because I used to do like four hours of these at a time and absolutely ruined my voice so I try and write personal poetry in order to process emotions and it really helps I've definitely written my fair share of breakup poems maybe that'd be a good thing for you to try will you critique me if I do you're only half joking. The other half of you is genuinely, genuinely scared that someone will read your innermost thoughts and call them trash. There's a reason you prefer to repress things. Mm, yeah. I got one more and then I'm gonna take a break. So like, I'm doing like, this month there's three digital diversity streams because we're not doing podcasts this month because things are just too much. Um, so we did one last, uh, last week, then this week, and the next one. 
What do I have to say about the stretch goals of the game? Um, oh, okay. So, I know the one you're talking about. I know the uh, the one you're talking about, and I know it's controversial. So, I'm, I'm going to switch over here, and we're going to have a talk about it. The stretch goals of this game. The controversial one, which I have a very strong opinion of, is... You're allowed to have a fishing mini game in any game. It doesn't matter what that game is. You're allowed to have a fishing mini game in it. I think it's going to be a good inclusion. I think it could be something really positive, and I I want to see how it's handled because a fishing mini game inside of a visual novel is going to be something really cool. Like, because I don't think we've ever seen a proper fishing mini game in a visual novel. Um, no, seriously, I know the one you're talking about. <laughs> fishing mini games are fancy. Okay, the one you're talking about is uh so match three for fishing mini game that was okay so the uh one of the i'm gonna stop reading because i'm gonna start just going off so uh the other uh stretch goal for this one the one before the fishing mini game was include including a white person in the game and this this was done intentionally the way that it the way that's been worded, the way that it's been responded to, is I think a is a very clever, but no, I'm not going to say a very clever way of handling a lot of the ingrained racism in the video game world, in in all society as is in general. And I have seen, when I posted up that I was going to be streaming this, um, I had almost immediately a bunch of people coming in claiming that the game wasn't diverse because of what the character art was. Because they saw the character art, they saw that none of the characters on there were white, and they went, this game is not diverse. So, like... Yeah, I want to see the hostess. That that will be their white character. Um, I think it was a very clever, reactionary way of pushing that we need games that actually are diverse. That say you don't have to have white people in a game if that game is not about white people communities. Like from the uh, one of the one of the responses we got was that uh, was a negative. Like these are all black characters. They saw the art and they went, "These are all black characters. This isn't diverse. This is racism against white people. You cannot have racism against white people. It doesn't exist." I'm going to say, as a white person, there is no racism in. You, you cannot have racism against white people it just doesn't happen uh you can't have we are white people as a whole are way too privileged i am a marginalized person but i still get white person privilege and i will use that whenever i can to try and help i it is a lot of the time it, that means stepping back and pushing the voices that need to be heard but seriously um but one of the responses to that went yeah i'm marginalized but not because i'm white i'm marginalized because of this and this i'm marginalized because of this about my like mental health stuff i'm not marginalized for like but uh, for for the color of my skin and someone pointed out that in the uh let me see if i can find it uh in the cover art that i put up and someone was saying that it was all black characters um, of those characters that there were, uh, let me see if I can find it. Oh, there's one specific response that I'm looking for here. And they're actually saying they're like all different, uh, backgrounds. Where is it? Unfortunately, I blocked a lot of the, the responses because there were some bad responses. Um, 
da, 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 da. yeah there are there are a bunch oh fuck i'm not going back there i'm not gonna go look again because there's still some bad stuff in there um but yeah there's like uh there's some alien characters in there yeah that one thank you i was looking for that one yeah so in that banner in the banner for this game there is a Ghanan person a Chinese person, an American person, a French Korean person, a Qatari South African person, uh, a Samoan, a Pakistani. Uh, so that is a fucking big diverse group. And I will swear and I will happily swear about this because it is a very diverse group. And we see at this at the beginning of this, when uh, Ashley goes into the um, goes into the salon and goes wait this is this is a salon for black black people uh because everyone here is is black and go i don't feel no if i'm comfortable here like i not like bad uncomfortable but like i don't think i fit in kind of one so yeah um so i agree i agree with how they've done things i know that they are being uh inflammatory as what as some people might say because i think the point needs to be made so that is that is kaiju's thoughts on this fishing games yes and i i i highly encourage how they have done things and i encourage being inflammatory to make a point made yeah exactly if it, even if it was an entirely black cast, it would still be a diverse one. So, yeah. Yeah, they, they try their troll arguments, but that's my thoughts. I am happily to discuss this further outside of the game, um, but we are an hour 20 into this already. So, there we go. I'm probably going to get myself my, my Let's Play removed from YouTube once I put this up for, for that, but... The people who, made, who are making this game are fucking awesome people. They are do some, doing something really incredible with a relatively simple engine and making a lot of points made and a lot of relatable feels made. And that's the thing, like... So, yeah. Are we all good? Are we all good here? Are we all good here? I need a drink. My, I've just, like... Did I say anything outwardly embarrassing there? I think my brain just went in ramble space. I didn't think I went into rough directions. Yolanda time. Yes, Yolanda. Uh, where do we go? Back, we'll go back, there we go. Thank you. Like, discussions of racism are not my space to discuss. Like, I can discuss them from the point of someone who has white privilege um, and can only equate any kind of marginalization with the marginalization that I go through. So it is a completely different thing. Um, so yeah, I'm going to take a breath. <sighs> We're going to go neutral. And we're going to get back into this. I just think it's a good thing for you to do. Well, shit, you hadn't thought about that. You don't mo do you do most things with the expectation someone will see them, that someone will acknowledge them. Thank you for streaming, uh, for your streaming to baking goods you give to friends and neighbors. Everything you do is presented to others, even though you consider yourself selfish person in many ways. Everything you do has been for others. Uh, writing poetry. So, uh, Yolanda was encouraging Ashley to write poetry. Ashley is now considering writing poetry, despite the even if no one will see it, because everything that she does is for other people. Uh, so, uh, her streaming, her baking, like all of her stuff, it's usually for the public for other people's um, uh, interaction. There we go. I think we're good. Do we need any other follow-up? Do we need a, any more recap here or? All right, I think we're good. 
I'll have to consider it, and I'm not much of a writer though. It's okay, I promise. You really won't have to be. I don't consider myself to be a great writer or anything, it's just a nice way to reflect on things. I see. That makes sense. So you don't share it with anyone? I share it with partners sometimes. But can I let you in on a little secret? What is it? I never tell them it's about me, so no one thinks I'm the subject. That's my safety net. You crack a smile at that. It's funny. The fact that people who are supposed to be close wouldn't know their lover's personal poetry when they saw it. You look like you're about to crack up. Do I? Definitely. What's so funny? Yolanda smiles back at you, relaxed and open. How people can be so obvious when vulnerability is right in front of them. I shouldn't find it funny. But you do. She totally does. She's cracking a smile right now and you know a self-satisfied smile when you see it. You're practically a master at those. A little, yeah, but hey, there's always a next time. Hopefully it works out. I hope so too. I like to believe the one is still out there waiting for me. That would be nice, wouldn't it? You both look at each other, you feel strangely at peace. Things might be shitty right now, but there are still people out there meant for you. You hope your wonder is one of those people. You take a last bite of food, after a few moments your server comes back. I love dramatic irony, like I am like all in on that shit. Like, I end up like death out of Discworld, it's like, oh, drama. But at the same time, I do love a bit of dramatic irony. You take your last bite of food, after a few moments your server comes back. How was everything? It was great, thank you. Yeah, it was delicious. It's good to hear. Are you ready for your check now? I think so. What do you think? Yeah, I'm ready. I'll give you some more practice after this. Right, I'll be with you in a moment. The server walks away and the two of you each face each other again. You feel good about this. Really good about this. I was going to ask if you wanted to come back to my place, but I don't want to intrude too much. You raise your eyebrows. Surprised. Really? You would do that for me? Definitely. But you need to pro- Fuck practice, I've done enough of that while I was busy pitying myself. I'd love to hang out. <laughs> <laughs> All right then, what do you want to do? Good question. I was thinking we should. You turn, you go on to discuss the wide range of action movies you can watch, and Yolanda returns with some artsy films you can watch. You decide on one of each, but you end up sleeping over. While you're frustrated that your skincare routine was thrown off, your happiness outweighs any dissatisfaction. Hey, thanks for the host. You end up hanging out with her again next week and it becomes a thing. You even come over to one of her poetry nights and it's better than you thought it'd be. You two aren't similar at all, but it's nice to reconnect over something new. Something outside of the pain Isaiah caused you both. Plus she calls you out in your anger. You might just be, ju you might be justified in your emotions. Poetry dates. Yeah, I mean, you, you gotta take someone to a poetry slam once in a while, right? I used to do poetry slams. I quite like them. Queer poetry slams are my jam. Fuck. Um, you might be justified in your emotions, but you aren't justified in your actions. God, and that, that that's a line. That's a line I recommend people use. Like, you can be justified in your emotions, but not justified in your actions. So you gotta, like, balance those out. She never babies you about it, but she's far from cruel. You could learn a thing or two from her. You realise you're doing well when you're talking to some of Yolanda's poetry friends, and you can safely say you could become friends with them too. You're different than you were back then. While you don't entirely like the way you are, you like yourself more now. And isn't that what counts in the end? You're happier now, and that's what matters. Poetic justice ending! Oh my god, we're gonna have time for a second one. We got an ending. So, um, apparently every one of the endings has its own, will have its own achievement. 
Um, shall we? Shall we? Shall we do num another one? Shall we do another one? We're like, we got another. We got at least another half hour. I'm I'm happy to do another one. All right. So we've got Isabel, Anoki, and Arihi. Who are we going? Who's uh? Two Leos and a Pisces. Um, please respond with either Spamilton. Uh, Spamilton, cosplay, or scam. So, Spamilton, cosplay, scam. Cosplay? Oh fuck, everyone wants a cosplay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm Uh yeah, when so as we were discussing before, when this character page went up online, shit went wild. But you know what? I was perfectly happy to follow up with I love that it says on God for white people. Fuck, that's so good. So we're gonna be a Noki. <sighs> Despite your usual atrocious level of FOMO, you can't quite decide who to reach out to. While well, you're sure one of your cosplay buddies would, buddies would be down to hang, or maybe your co-workers. Something in, your, in you wants to talk to someone new today. Maybe you'll head out to the town a bit, try to make a new friend. Or maybe you'll just get closer with a casual acquaintance. You've got a few. And their names are all on your phone screen right in front of you. Yeah, exactly. It's priceless. Him? No. You swipe down the list. Maybe them. But then again, oh what the hell, you click on the contact photo and hit send, this poss can't possibly go wrong. Oh, we've only got one to choose from this one. We've got a Sagittarius? Is that the arrow? Malik, rapper by day, player by night. Manager at Bop Eyes. Yeah, that hair is amazing. <laughs> I love this. Done with white people, sure. But with you, who knows? And I love that a Noki uses like, is one of the like any pronouns kind of people. Feels right. Here we go. Out of a keychain on the phone, yeah. Anoki's a weeb, and I love them. I love them already. Send. Pancakes and chill. It's been done so well. Uh, there we go. Content warning, transphobia. Fuck. Like, this way of doing content warnings? I love this. Like... Giving, being given the opportunity to find out what content warnings you've got when you've got that, because you can go back, you can just press back. Um, yeah, it's right there, for, but it's not at the very start. You don't know if like all the paths you're gonna get will have that content. Having it for the specific path lets you know what you're getting into. Beautiful, beautiful. Alright, good, no problem. Catch you later, look after yourself. You're on your lunch break from work and you already want to go home. Sure, you like your job. Event planning is somewhat fulfilling to you, but so is your new card keeper, Baruka Cos... Bakura Cos... Oh, right. Sa card keeper, Sakura. So card keeper, Bakura. That's definitely weighing on you right now. 
you're almost finished working on it and you want nothing more than to show it off for the photo shoot as soon as possible. A cosplay buddy of yours already told you they were free this weekend. You just want it to be Saturday already. Your name is Anoki... Uh... Hotekia? I'm not gonna pretend I know how to pronounce that properly. Yeah, I miss cons too. And you wish you were anywhere but here right now. They're definitely more invested in your professional cosplay compared to what's actually paying your rent. And you wonder how much longer you'll be stuck between two jobs. For now though, you can't think about your passions versus your obligations right now. Maybe that's the whole point of being 22, but you're not digging it. When things open up again, I highly recommend get some cons. Just find something that matches your passions and just head out. You just wish you'd get to the part of your life where everything has already worked out so you can have some kind of break from the pressure you've always been feeling. Oh, Anaki, I have some bad news for you. I'm sorry that that part doesn't happen. I love the, like, the angry looking face on the machine up in the corner there. You're pretty hungry and while you try and eat healthy most of the time, Popeyes is looking awfully tempting right now. It doesn't help that you forgot to bring your packed lunch. You're exhausted from dealing with your co-workers. It gets worse but it does get gayer. B25 and extremely. <laughs> well, I'm 32 and I'm... Uh, I, I, it took me to get up to nearly I was 30 before things got really gay, so, you know, it takes time. You like most of the people you work with, but you can't help but be irritated when they aren't clear about what they want from you. It might be the new, might be the newbie, but that doesn't mean that you have to go in blind for everything. Anyways, enough bitching about work. You don't want the poor Bopeyes employees to see you look so pissed off. Thing on your which kind of bop eyes yeah they already deal with enough and as you enter the restaurant you give a, you give the menu a cursory glance the sandwich sounds good and since the hype has died down no one will try and kill you over it either it's a win-win situation by the time you get to the register you notice a pretty attractive looking employee behind the counter attractive and oddly familiar you've sure you've seen him around but you've never been to this bop eyes before Hi, how are you? I'm good, how about yourself? Look at this little bop. Look at this little bop. <laughs> Chad. <laughs> More, he's not. It's Malika Chad. I mean, there's a, they're wearing a polo shirt, so. Putting the bop into bop eyes, yeah. Good, I'd like a spicy chicken sandwich, please. Can I also ask you something weird? If you're gonna ask him, it's best to get it out of the way. The worst that could happen is him saying no. Can't be weirder than the usual. Wait, I've seen you before. At least you know now you weren't tripping when you thought you'd met him. You're still surprised though. You don't think of yourself as a very memorable person. Really? Where? It was that new rap event in, uh, what was it called again? Oh, the up-and-coming rappers of the East Coast event. I was there for that. I must have seen you in the crowd. Or were you one of the performers? Nah, not this time. I'll have to wait for the next one of those. King of Fighters character? For sure. So you're a rapper? You're not the biggest fan of rap, but you like it enough. You're curious what his music sounds like. Sure am. Pretty damn good at it, too. If you got one of my mixtapes, you'd know. Oh god, is mixtape like the modern equivalent of showing someone your etchings in like Victorian England? It's like, here, have my mixtape. Why'd you decide on mixtapes? So why mixtapes? I'm not saying it's a bad idea or anything, just curious. That's a good question. There's something classic about them, and that's what I want to emphasize with my music. Is it on a cassette? Like, if the mixtape isn't on a literal tape, does it count? That makes sense to me. You're right, though. There's something classic about it. I like the idea of them. Look at those. 
I love the character art, it's so good. You remember a brief fling you had in high school saying he'd make you a mixtape, though that particular relationship never worked out for various reasons. The idea of someone making one for you sounds both incredibly romantic and deeply impossible. Yeah, you get it. He takes something from under the counter and places it in front of you. Here's one of his, it's one of his mixtapes. He quickly writes something down on it with a marker in his pocket before handing it to you. So you're giving me one of your mixtapes now? That's right, I'm the manager here. I make my own rules. I'm the manager of Bob Eyes. I will hand out my mixtapes to whoever I want. I don't know about that. There's a line forming behind me. Isn't it always customer first around these parts? Hand out my bobs. Oh shit, really? Didn't notice. His tone suggests he definitely did notice, but he doesn't seem to care. Well, I guess I'll have to come up with a way to come back here then. You say this, but you're not entirely sure if you will. You'd be ashamed to end your interaction with Malik here, but you never go to Popeyes. Besides, you don't have time for romance. You've rejected enough people to establish that. Yeah, I think this is flirting. I think this is that flirting thing the kids are all do talking about these days. I found a way around that. I got my number on the mixtape. You should hit me up if you ever want to chill. Oh, he is flirting with you. You take the mixtape and look at the phone number. It seems legit. It has numbers in it and no letters. Mixtape and chill. Pancakes and chill, thank you. I'm a Noki, by the way. Malik. But the name tag says it all. If someone hands you their phone number and it's got letters in it, it's possibly not legit. Or it's from another time and space. If someone sends you their IP, it writes their IP address on your on their, their mixtape, you, you know they're someone special. Fuck. I'm just trying to imagine that. Like, how dirty would you have to be to give, write someone your IP address? It's like, yeah, my IP address. What's your IP address? Oh, it's 192.168.01. It's like, no, not home. I mean, what's your actual IP address? Gonna be a nerd. You don't have any intention of texting him back. He probably thinks you're a cis girl and you <laughs> that you want to go on dates with him and all that. I think we'll get to it. Like when I was a kid, I used to, uh, we used to give like each other our IP addresses because it was the only way to play multiplayer games. Like if you ever played to try tried to play um, Duke Nukem 3D multiplayer, you needed to know someone's IP address. Still, you do think you'll listen to the mixtape since you haven't been meaning to get back into new music anyway. By the time you get back to work, you're starting to change your mind. Servern, I have some news. Yeah, it was, a, it was a time ago. Your senior co-worker and close friend Sophia is sitting in the break room with you and a few others. What is it? Drum roll, please. Everyone looks at her, hesitant. You start the drum roll and your co-workers join in. Emily and I are engaged. Really? Last you heard, they've been dating six years now. It's honestly great news. You ignore the twinge in your heart as you hear about another person managing to settle down with someone they love. Your sister just got married three months ago and since everyone's been asking you when you plan to get serious about somebody. Yeah, she proposed to me over a really romantic dinner at our favourite steakhouse and... Sophia goes on. It's rude of you to zone out, you know. You don't really want to hear this. You insist you're fine on your own, but will you really be able to make it? How will you settle down with someone worthy if you don't give anyone a shot? So yeah, I wanted to give you all advanced invites to my wedding next year. It's the least I can do, since you've all helped me s at work and in life. But really, you don't have to. I want to. I called you all here for a reason, it's because I consider you my closest work friends. Really, it's the least I can do. If you insist, I'm sure I'm speaking for everyone when I'd say I'd love to be there. Me too. 
I love that Garrett is standing like a sailor scout. Or possibly a revolutionary girl lieutenant character. Look at that, look at that pose. Look, look at that pose. You just look at that. That That is... Like, that's someone who's prepared to fight evil by moonlight. Yeah, I'm gonna need to get the soundtrack for this later. Bring out the canyon transform, exactly. The others nod to Grimm as well, but you wonder how you're gonna deal with this. You used to like weddings, but now they're big showcases on how you're still single and susceptible to people hitting on you while drunk at the bar. Oh, well, so yeah, exactly. Say, let's go. It doesn't matter in the end, because you always rebuff their attempts. You think about Manic from Bop Eyes and find yourself with a sudden urge to text him. You don't think there's any way this can end well, but, well, you're experiencing some serious FOMO. You need to do something about it. Work passes, passes without a hitch after all. Yeah, exactly. Who needs cops when you got a magical goal on your side? You're exhausted by the time you get back, but at least it looks like your housemate is gone again. Likely hanging out with his boyfriend or something, curling up on the couch, you let out a sigh. God, I, f I really hope that after all the shit that's gone down this year, there will never be cops of pride again. Because, meh. You still have Malik's mixtape in your bag. You should give it a listen. It's interesting, to say the least. This does not sound like rap. But I'd kind of be cool if it was. You don't really listen to rap music, but you find yourself nodding along to the lyrics as you go along. That's a good sign, right? Before long, you realize you're starting to nod off to Malik's music and you let yourself. You're tired and you need the rest. Yeah. You dream of him as well. It's not a special dream, it's just him at Popeyes, rapping about his life. You go through the line one person at a time, and the sound of his voice follows you. By the time you get to the counter, he's smiling down at you, he takes your hand, and then... And then... You blink open your eyes to the sound of Malik's voice still filling the living room. He's rapping about his kids now, something about not knowing them, and you briefly wonder what's up with that. You must have taken a cat nap or something, because it's almost eight and you still haven't fixed dinner. With a groan, you get up and head to the kitchen, grateful your housemate is still gone. You let Malik's, yeah, Malik's music play in the, as you cook, wondering what he's up to right now. Is he still at work? Has he already gone home? Of course, you could always text him. Before you can talk yourself out of it, you pull out your phone and send off a quick text message. Hi Malik, it's a Noki from Boys. I like your mixtape. Hey, glad to hear it. What you up to? Just finishing up making dinner. How about you? Just chilling. Got home about 30 minutes ago. Bored as hell though. Nice. Pretty bored myself. Probably gonna watch a movie or something and go to bed. I was gonna ask if you wanted to come over and chill. Maybe smoke a bowl. I've never smoked before. I don't know. I'll teach you. It's the gentlemanly thing to do. This is kind of ex extremely shady, but you're lonely. And a lonely you is an impulsive you. Actually, can you come over here? I'm alone and my housemate doesn't get back till tomorrow night. You bite your lip, refusing to second guess yourself. Also, I have to tell you, I'm not cis. I prefer he, she, or those as they as pronouns, and this won't work if you don't understand that. Fuck. God, I think, like, this needs to be my standard, like, dating system now. Like, if I ever feel the need to go out and start dating again outside of my current polycule, I'm just, like gonna be sending them something like this it's like i tell you i'm not cis i prefer they as pronouns and this won't work if you don't understand that you take a deep breath and you should get you should be used to it right now but it's still frustrating that you have to go through this you wish coming out wasn't this constant but you know it has to be for you to live as your life your true self it needs to be fuck and this is an unfortunate truth is that when you are 
uh, trans and non and or non-binary, it can be a constant struggle to keep coming out to everyone. It can be rough. You just hope one day burden will stop falling on you. And it's like the burden falls on the person. Yeah. It's cool with me. What's your address? The coming over thing or the trans thing? Both. One of my co-workers is non-binary. Didn't know a whole lot about it. But it's cool with me. But can I ask you something? Sure, go ahead. Does that mean you don't like being called a woman at all? Like, what's up with that? Are you exactly like my co-workers a gender stuff or what? By the way, what does cis mean? Oh, it's gonna be one of those. <laughs> that fucking look. This is a lot to take in. You hate explaining yourself to cis people like this, but you did kind of put yourself in the position when you came out to someone who thought you were a woman. I have to find a way to deal with this. Fuck. <laughs> Explain or fuck. God. I mean, he seems nice. He seems just, like, ignorant and not against, like... Not in a bad way, so I think we'll I think we'll explain. It's so tempting. Like, this is the biggest fucking mood. This is especially like especially for non-binary folks. The like binary trans people, it it's still tough, but it's like when you have to add additional layers. Explaining is tiring, but this is a this is a like possible rumor. Yeah, just Google. Yeah, go Google. Nah, the the problem with telling people to go Google shit is they'll usually go to the wrong place. So the, you tell someone to Google what LGBTQIA is, and they'll go, oh, A stands for allies, because they'll pick the first thing on Google. We'll explain it. Well, cis is short for cisgender. It means you identify with the gender you were assigned at birth. Non-binary is a range of genders, so it's not really one third gender. I consider myself gender fluid, and those are two separate genders. Yeah, e exactly. Like, there are, there are non-binary women, there are non-binary men, there are a gender, there are gender fluid, there are, like, a poor gender like me, where, like, like, I'm a poor agenda, which means that my gender is mine. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't, like, line up with anyone else's, uh, with any other, like, standard thing. What I identify with is my specific feeling of it. So, yeah. Okay, I think I get that now. Thanks for explaining. Yeah. Like, this seems like something you just need to have saved in a, in a notepad or something. Yeah, getting tired of the question is true, but getting patient with new people, yeah, it's, it's hard to figure out where it's required. Like, if this was a stranger, like someone we didn't know, I'd say fuck explaining and they can go look it up themselves. In fact, I've got, like, I've actually got goddamn, uh, commands for this sort of thing. Uh, I got some in there somewhere and I have no idea where. Uh, I can't remember. There we go. So like if I needed to, if someone came in and asked, I could just go what is NB and they would give you like an example. And for a lot of people, having these sorts of uh, ready programmed responses in just saves you having to like explain it all the time. It's just like, here's a source, go read this source. No problem, happy to help. There's kind of a problem, but ignorance doesn't necessarily mean someone's unwilling to learn. You're just glad Malik came around. Yeah, I'm good with all that. 
Okay, cool. Let me get you my address. You message Malik your address. Cool. Be there in 15. You put your phone down and sigh. Why did you even do that? Are you really that desperate? Clicking out of Malik's message screen, you send a quick text to a friend letting her know what's happening, and if you don't respond within three hours, your bop I date is definitely a serial killer. You spend the next 15 minutes picking up the place and doing the dishes. It's not the neatest it's ever been, but it's not terrible either. You also try to change some pajamas with pockets so you can hide your pepper spray. Yeah, exactly. That's the hardest question so far. It's not perfect. Your cosplay materials are still out, but you don't really have time to put them away. Not when you get the notification from Malik that he's here. You open the door, nervous about holding pepper spray behind your back. He's in casual clothes, a t-shirt and jeans that make his legs look really nice. You're trying not to stare too much. Hey. Hey. Can I come in? Yeah, of course. It's a little messy though. My cosplay stuff's all over the place, I hope you don't mind. Yeah, I still got the god- it's, it's a knockoff polo shirt. I like that it's just a knockoff polo shirt. Cosplay? You mean when people dress up as anime characters and all that? Well, at least he knows that much. That's a relief. Though he doesn't seem to know the full extent of it. You could educate him fully, but that would take time and energy that you could use for, use for getting high. Probably best save that for another time. Basically, he can be any fictional character, really. I'm doing mine on Card Keeper Bakura. Have you ever heard of it? Bolo shirt. Yeah, the knockoff items and names and stuff are great. Nah, but I watch Rinu Yasha. Good shit. Bro. Showing your age there, Malik. Malik steps into the apartment, you take your step back. So Malik's gonna be like mid thirties. It feels like if if they're a if they're a Ridu Yasha person. Malik steps into your apartment, you take a step back, casually putting the pepper spray into your pocket. But yeah, make yourself at home. I made some space in the dining room if that's good with you. You had space on the table, right? Yeah, you think I should clear up some more? Alright, so, um, to keep ourselves safe from t terms of service, we are not going to continue with this bit because um, there is obviously going to be some drug references and stuff like that and Twitch tends to be a little uh, picky about that sort of stuff. So we're going to go back to the main menu. I really, I am going to be following this myself, yeah. Like, if there's two things I want to try and avoid on stream, it's uh, drugs and sex. I don't know why that's not in the content warning. That should really be in the content warning. Um, uh, but yeah. Um, drugs and sex are usually the ones you don't want to try and avoid when streaming. Um, but before we finish up, I want to see what the other... Uh, options are going to be so just on the demo so this is what you've got so if we go Arihi and we skip oh my god <laughs> Arihi <laughs> fuck I love that. I love that. Fuck. Okay. Back, back, back. Malik is omnipresent. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be an interesting dynamic. And the last one is Isabel. Yeah, I love the Hamilton star and everything. Ashley is the only one that gets two options and that aren't a guy. <laughs> Fuck. 
Oh, gamer privilege. Yeah, Ashley has gamer privilege. Fuck. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. How do we choose only? Because people wanted, people wanted Ashley. I'm looking forward. To, this character looks cool. Let's have a look. I'm curious about the character arts. So they look cool. Isabel looks cool. I mean, there's going to be more options for each character, of course. This is just the demo. Please remember that. So, out of, out of all those, there's four playable characters. Hi, Yolanda. Um, only in total four you can roam, uh, four you can date, four you can interact with. Yeah, I I know it will because there's going to be twelve playable characters. Um, so theoretically, each of those should have at least two options. So I'd be curious where they all go. They look pretty cool. I like them. Yeah, get get all the get all the Malik out of the way in the demo. Holy hell, they're cute. Also, I love the little bright by pride uh, flag. They're cool. I love the I love the heart earrings. So I'm assuming these are all either going to be playable or romanceable characters. That's some style. I'm I'm just wi winding up this one. They're cool. Yeah, I'm loving the styles. All the all these character styles are really cool. Malik, bro. Yeah, I'm wondering if all of those Malik options would have ended up with uh, drug use. They look cool. Um, but yeah. So yeah. And then there's Ashley. There's our there's our gamer girl. Um. So yeah, folks, this was, this was really good. This was great. Uh, I'm, I love the hell out of this and now we're looping back. That's all good. So thank you folks. Thank you so, so much for being here with me today. This was a heckin' stream. This was a heckin' stream and we covered a lot of stuff and heck, what a, what a, what a heckin' stream. Uh, highly recommend go get the validate demo it's up there at uh words uh validate game .io. the demo is up there now uh go check that out uh we remember we missed a bunch of room a bunch of options there so go in and find out what the other characters are like um well, uh, the Kickstarter's on now, so if you want to see more, highly recommend going and supporting the Kickstarter if you can. As with all these things, like a couple of dollars might mean the world to the developers, uh, especially since they are just like really on point with a lot of stuff and their feels are really good and I love it. Yeah, we missed a bunch of Malik. We missed a lot of Malik. Uh, so next week we will be streaming another game because I'm doing three of these in a row. Um, uh, yes, um, we're streaming another one next week, same time. And that'll probably be it for a little bit just because I've got moving to do and stuff. So yeah, uh, if you want to know more about what Digital Diversity is doing, please, uh, you can go to at Digidiverse on the Twitter, you can follow me at, at @mbkaiju, and yeah, uh, next week is I am a love interest in my childhood friend's reverse harem, uh, which our very wonderful mod uh, Draz did editing and a sensitivity reading for, and that has just come out from Kickstarter, and uh, has just finished production, so I'm really keen to try that as well. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So yeah, until next time folks, thank you so much for hanging out. 
Uh, until next time, this has been Digital Diversity. I have been Kaiju. Look after yourselves. Look after each other. Remember that you are not alone. The world is a scary fucking place right now, but you aren't alone in it. Keep being awesome. If you're queer, keep being queer. And play some games. Get out there and just play some games. Until next time, folks. See ya.